I wanted to talk a bit about secrets of the self because a lot of my questions, my work, my art, has been this question of who are we? But not simply who are we uniquely, but as human. What, what are our systems, so to speak? What's our structure? And the question of the self, of the sense of the secret self, meaning why do I feel the way I do? And this is why my work on the tarot helps us understand structure, archetypal structure, like a piano. And this is the wheel to my right. And the wheel to my left is the mandala created by 180 cards of my Phoenix Arise painting. But they're both stable. They're not in motion, they're not a technology that something's being done for us, but they are actually fixed. And why this is important is the environment here and these instruments here are about creating a fixed relationship for one's own energy body, one's own, as you would say, if you're walking a labyrinth or even walking through a garden, the roses speak to you in a certain way. The labyrinth will take you essentially on a, into a certain, I'd say, meditation. And part of the, the narrative of the secrets of the self going into our depth is that much of the concern of who we think we are is that we're forced because we can't remember that we're an instrument. We can't remember that we are composed of a structure that if we begin to ask the right questions, and this art is now not a concept, I'm not speaking conceptually, this is a manifestation, meaning we're looking at literal structure. And if we begin to understand our psyche, that a picture language and a structure helps us communicate not simply with our intellectual or our self-reflective self, but the pattern self. This is why much of the construct that helps us deal with mental um, difficulties is why mandalas, why the, the pattern becomes so significant is because the brain is composing that more deeply than the eyes, meaning the eyes are looking, trying to figure out but when it seeks into pattern, we begin to trust. And this is where the question became also of where can we do this? Where can one do this? And this is why this is my home, why this is intimate space. And psychologically speaking, the intimate space is the key to understanding now. But also the universal setting, because the problem is that if we create a self-portrait that is just on the surface, just in reflection, then we're never enough. And all we feel is anguish and emptiness. And hopefully there's a day on Tuesday where we feel better because Wednesday will be just as depressing as it was last Wednesday. But the human condition has essentially, because we've been depleted of a sense of relevance or meaning of our own instrumentation, we've become very small, even to ourselves, like, oh, I just want to be comfortable, I just want to be entertained, I just don't want to deal with things. And I, and I feel like that's also the relevance of this being my home, is that as much as you'd like to do that, you still have to take your kids to school, you still have to go to the grocery, take, pay your bills, pay your taxes. In other words, we're all, as human, having to face the same currents and conditions in different ways, but it's all the same. None of us get out of any of it. Do you know, I mean, if you're happy, somebody else is depressed that you love, and suddenly you don't feel that your happiness kind of makes as much sense until essentially they're feeling better. So, but I feel like the whole theater in this world now is that the exhaustion going on, the sense of futility going on, is the world saying, look, if you can't trust anyone or anything, then who can you trust? Well, maybe it's you. If you can't trust the neighbor or the, the community or that which to be there because it seems like everyone is acting very selfish, selfishly, but then you say, I don't have to go along with that. I have to navigate that. But maybe I have to think from where I live, from my heart. And that's why the art here came from that level. The level of the heart that says, look, if we don't as human come up with a way of telling the story that somehow addresses the despair not felt by me alone, but by the human being, and not just in our time or our generation or our cultures, but across the ages, then empathy is essentially meaningless until we recognize that we have been going through age after age after age. And Joseph Campbell said it best. He said, in myth, there is no tragedy. And I think what he was getting at is what this art is getting at, 
that when, like a Shakespearean play, we begin to understand that the nature of the psyche and the nature of the outer world is based upon a type of archetypal structure. We can see this in our world. You say, oh, well, the bank robber and the king and the pope, they're different figures. We see this in movies. We have these different figures. Well, we have those in dreams. And we also have those inside of ourselves. So the question is, how do we put it together, not to correct it, not to critique it, but to understand that it contains, and these are why wheels are very much part of the signature of what's going on here and the story of the hidden self or the secret self. Because think about where you live, that's your secret self. The 24 hour a day self, the one you can't escape. You have to look at yourself or not look at yourself. But this is what and why the anguish can't be solved by entertainment or drugs or escape because we have to live with ourselves. And so the structure here is if we understand the archetypal nature, we understand the black and white. We understand that, like Joseph Campbell again would, would really teach, that if you begin to see that the mythic structure of our lives are not personal, we're all on a unique hero's journey. We're all trying to find meaning. But then when you look at the library, when you look at the instrument, you realize it's not to figure it out for others. It's to live vitally the wheel of one's own life, the seasons of one's own life, the layering of one's own life in the same way the pages of a book are different from one book to another. But the beauty is it all hints at the unique blossoming of a story that begins finally from where we live and love. If you think of a blossom, you think of art. This isn't where we're shouting. It's where we're finally creating place. We're saying at least here this matters. So here in art, in manifestation, in location, in intimacy, we have the story of the archetypes returning home, meaning that the world that we have weathered has finally said the last question is, how do we live with our myths? How do we understand we're structured by the whole story? That this body of ours is a hologram, it's holographic, and that there's no there, there in a hologram. It's always based on what story are we telling ourselves about who we think we are? And the good news here is, this is saying each one of us are composed of an ancient structure, of archetype, like the keys of a piano, an instrument, given to each of us, played differently by each of us, just like every book in the library is a different story, but they're each human. And that every blossom of the phoenix is different. But they all reveal a sun, S-U-N, at the center. And at the center, there's nothing. The pupil of the eye, so to speak, is formed by the unfoldment of the wheel. So what if that's our story? We don't know why or how, but we enter into the wheel of time. We take this journey of unfoldment. And if we think of ourselves more organically, like a flower, we go through the process of the compacted seed, and we lose that sense of containment but then we start pushing against the earth. We've died to that old world. And as we're pushing against, we get used to pushing against as our identity until finally we break that earth. And as we do, we rise higher and higher in that sense of growth. We must be getting some, we're getting somewhere. And then the season hits and we stop growing. And then we close our fists. We don't know what's going on because we once were getting higher and we were the outcome of this journey of it. But then the blossom says, come back. His structure was to get somewhere, but it was to finally bring you here. So you are not simply yourself alone, but the heart that is yours is the phoenix heart. The blossom that is yours is uniquely yours, but it's part of a library based upon a structure that said, if we enter and recognize ultimately that we are the instrument and we are the outcome, we will realize that the difficulty was to turn us from grand archetypes and direct knowers into artists of consciousness. Because art is not a product, it's an approach. It's the willingness to step into the not knowing, to be mentored by that not knowing, and who knows, just as we find here, it might reveal universes of meaning because we honored it enough to not say it should be elsewhere. It should be here. Maybe that's the beginning of our story 
our structure holds our blossom, and each of us are uniquely human. Wheels within wheels. Isn't it great that it's your story?